Hi, I'm pissed. Also, I'm Crane. Thank you for tuning in. This might not be what you expected to see from me today, but we gotta talk about this. If you're unfamiliar, something weird and kind of big is happening right now in this game, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. The developers are kind of going after content creators. They're not going everyone covering the game, they're going after a select few specifically. Now before I go into that, what is Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes? It's basically a game where you either spend a lot of money or a lot of time to gather shards for characters, to then have them at seven stars, where you then can focus on gearing them up with pieces you spend energy on, and then you have to mod them, and then you have to keep gearing them past getting all the gear by spending a new resource. It's a bit messy, huh? I've been playing this since late 2015, just a few weeks after launch. Heard about it on a podcast and just needed something to play during downtime. The one thing I was adamant about was to not spend money. And did that work for me? Well, there's always temptation. So I spent some here and there, no big amounts. Like one month I could spend maybe 30 bucks on the game, then not spend anything for half a year, and I'd spend 40 bucks. You know, stuff like that, nothing big. Well, in November of last year, I decided that I should try at least once to basically wail out on a character. Though in this game, it's far from wailing out, but in normal terms, not this messed up game where you can spend tens of thousands of dollars and not have everything, not wailing out like that, I chose to spend a few hundred bucks because a character was coming out that I was looking forward to. And I figured... I can try this once. I'll try it once and that's it. And you know why that's a messed up way to think? Because that's how addiction starts. Let's see. So who did I choose to wail out on? Quote unquote wail. General Skywalker. This character cost me between four and five hundred dollars to get. Was it worth it? No. (laughs) No, it wasn't. Not even. Not even close. Oh, the game's super easy for me now, but was it satisfying in any way? Not really. To me, it hurt more to see the money just go out of my bank account into a character that might not be here in a few months. Because, I mean, this game's not gonna be around for much longer, let's be real. So I chose to spend money on this character. What did I spend it on? Gear. Because I had all the characters that I needed. And here is what they looked like when I attempted the event. So why is this bad? Well, I spent four or five hundred dollars to get these two rows of characters to the correct gear requirement. Because I had been gathering them for, I, I don't know, years? Since at least when they came out, because I've been playing this game for years. I've been slowly gathering them free to play. Since they came out, somehow I had max stars on all of them. So when that happens, is your character done? No, no, boo-boo, no, no. (sighs) You'd think that when you finally gathered everything and you have the full character, you'd be done. But no, there are hundreds upon hundreds of dollars you need to put into this to quote-unquote finish a character. And even when it's finished, there are hundreds of other characters that you need to finish and new ones that come out all the time. So you can never be, as the devs have said, the tip of the spear unless you spend a bunch of money. Now why is this different from any other mobile game? Why am I talking about this like it's some huge controversy that this game has greedy developers that want money? Because of this. Now this is a content creator known as Arnold T101. He's the biggest YouTuber that's covering Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. He has 155,000 subscribers as of me recording this. When something new is announced for the game, his video covering it gets more views than the official video put out by the developers. That's what we're talking about here. Why was he banned? Well, he was using another player's account. This person had spent around $50,000 on this account and then decides to quit. So what do they do? Well, they decide to give the account to Arnold so he can cover the game 
more efficiently and not let the account just go to waste. Which, yeah, fair enough. But why was he banned? A while ago, that account suddenly became unable to buy crystals, the real money resource that you buy in the game. And a few days went by, he contacted the support about why he couldn't buy crystals, and then boom, he's banned. No warnings, just boom, the account's banned. And he was banned, apparently, because it's against the terms of service to share accounts. Here's the thing, though. Almost every content creator for this game do account sharing. There are people who run a business by modding people's characters, where they have to go into people's accounts to rearrange their mods. Now, what are mods, you ask? Well, you innocent soul. It's another layer of you have to invest in this to make your character better. It's a garbage system. Whatever. There are a ton of people who do account sharing. But sure, let's say he deserves the ban. Sure, let's, let's say that. He deserves the ban. Okay, so why are people mad? He went against the terms of service. Because they never apply the terms of service. Even the account sharing thing, a year ago, one of the devs even told people that, yes, I would recommend using this person's modding service, though do it with caution, because sharing accounts heightens the risk of you having it hijacked. But this is a dev saying this. Nothing about, we don't condone this, but just be careful. Someone might hijack it. Little did we know, the developers were going to be the ones to hijack it. But what makes this even worse is the fact that there came out leaked conversations between devs of this game. By the way, the devs are called Capital Games. And boy, do they love Capital. A leaked chat came out between one of the devs and a cheater, a hacker of the game, where the dev was like, well, pff, gee, we sure, we sure did catch you red-handed. However, uh, here's your warning, and you... You can pick whenever you want to get banned, it's going to be a week, and then you can come back. You can, you can pick when the ban starts. I mean, me personally, I would say 2022, because the game's going to be dead and gone by then. So that's my tip for the hacker. This is where the big issue lies in this. Why would they warn a cheater of the game, someone who hacks the game? Why would they give them a warning, but outright ban an account that's being run by the biggest content creator for the game. Well, do I have a story for you? <laughs> Back in the day, there was a thing called EA Game Changers. I don't know, it might be in effect in some games, but it's certainly gone from Galaxy of Heroes. Anyway, Arnold and a bunch of other content creators who got their starts with this game, more or less, were part of the Game Changer program. And the Game Changer program gave them an in where they could speak to developers and communicate to them and to the audience of the game. A neat idea. The problems, though, I mean, they may have, the problems may have shown themselves before what I'm going to talk about now. But the big problems came when a little game called Marvel Strike Force came out. Marvel Strike Force is essentially Galaxy of Heroes, but it's Marvel characters. And turned out to be a big competitor to Galaxy of Heroes because they actually put effort into their game. They had better animations, a very appealing IP. When Star Wars was falling further and further, Marvel was doing better and better. So they were a big threat. So what did the devs do? They decided to threaten the game changers. At first, they tried to incentivize them to not cover Marvel Strike Force by saying, oh, if you stick with Galaxy of Heroes, we'll, we'll give you promotion in the game, and uh, stuff like that. Promising them a bunch of shit. And then, when that didn't stick, they started threatening them. And what do I mean by threatening them? Well, they threatened to take legal action based on contracts that were never signed or even existed in the first place. Uh, Capital Games disbanded the Game Changer program. They've uh, also tried sending threatening legal emails to me when they were not in the right and they realized they weren't in the right. They tried to stop us from covering Marvel Strike Force and many other instances over the history. This is just another score on the scoreboard for them trying to bully content creators. And they threatened to strike their channels. 
and do all kinds of weird stuff because they had broken a contract which didn't exist. Now the funny thing is that Arnold was in law school when this happened. <laughs> which I would say is kind of the ultimate irony in all this. Not that you have to be in law school to understand that what they were doing was messed up. But it was kind of funny just coming at them with straight facts. Telling them, we never signed this, these papers don't exist, show them to me, or back off, and they never replied. Though things didn't end there. As soon as Marvel Strike Force kind of waned a bit, it wasn't the talk of the town, the Game Changer program was shut down. And with that, all communication with Capital Games ceased. They released some videos every now and then. They released big events with Darth Revan, Malak, General Skywalker, as I showed you before. Then came the Galactic Legends, Rey and Kylo, which are insane money sinks. And content creators, once again, called them out. Because what they're doing is nonsense. They just keep pumping out pay-to-play events where they expect you to spend thousands of dollars for garbage where you can enter a fight, click auto, and you win. And that's the entire game. It's just... It is pay-to-win in the most real way. So content creators were calling them out on this. The silence continues. We come into May... And the Empire Strikes Back celebrations are going on. No real news. What do we get? Oh, we get a character announcement. What is it? What's our favorite Empire Strikes Back character that we don't have yet? Looking at you, Bespin Luke. What do we get? We get a TIE Bomber? Okay, weird. But that's probably just the start of the event. Okay, next we're surely going to get Bespin Luke. And then Arnold gets banned. He covers it in a video. And all hell breaks loose. This was... The final straw. Arnold came out and told the entire story of what's been going on behind the scenes. Why the devs most likely don't like him. And he was backed up by two other very big content creators for the game. Mobile Gamer. You're crazy, developers, if you think there's not going to be any criticism. You know how you can avoid criticism? Don't build a shit game! They're like actively been trying to work against us. One, they personally tried to attack me and take down videos on my channel for no reason at all with imaginary contracts and threatened takedowns. Then they, they, they were so upset about me making Marvel Strike Force videos that they were like threatening to kick me out of the program, threatening all kinds of things, withholding perks, uh, saying you'll never get an in-game ad. The only reason why they worked with any content creators it was during the time when Marvel Strike Force was coming out and they were their sole purpose was not was to keep everybody from going and playing Marvel Strike Force. That's it. They were doing everything to get me to not make Marvel Strike Force videos. It's insane. They look at us as some weird extension of their marketing department that can be bribed or bullied into doing what they want. It's insane. And nobody does this other than Capital Games. It's just outrageous uh, what they did to Arnold and uh, taking away the test accounts twice, trying to take down our, sending us threatening emails, citing contracts that didn't exist, threatening to take down videos on something that was nothing to do with anything. It wasn't even a Galaxy of Heroes video at all. Cubs fan Han. CG is more, Capital Games, is more concerned about banning Arnold uh, on his second account that was gifted to him because of a technicality in, deep in the text of a terms mm-hmm. of service agreement about account transfer. Um, they're more concerned about that than they are about banning a confirmed cheater. And in the video, mm-hmm. you see a dev negotiating with the cheater, give it, gifting him a one-week ban of which he can choose when it starts. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, the kind of treatment they're giving a cheater versus perma banning one of Arnold's accounts. So that's one issue. Being given promises of in game promotion, being given promises of regular uh, content trips, all of these things, like down the line, under the condition that we do not cover right. another game. And in, in the, that particular case, Marvel Strike Force. And as soon as that game settled down, they killed the program. 
They didn't just not give us what they were promising to give us. They took everything away. The devs of this game are disrespectful to everyone paying real money to play their game and to keep it going. The only thing I ask you is to not spend money on this game, even if they turn it around. Let the sun set, man. Let it end. It's not worth it. Not with these developers. It's not worth it. Let it end. Go play Persona 4 Golden on PC instead. It just came out on Steam. That's a 100 plus hour game for 20 bucks. I don't know what Galaxy of Heroes is, except for a casino where the owners aren't ashamed of looking bad and treating people poorly. That's it. That's all I have to say. Don't spend money on this game. Buy Persona 4 Golden. Screw Capital Games. Goodbye.